I wanted to acknowledge the devastating loss of a dear friend and member of the Marvel Studios family. Chadwick Boseman was an immensely talented actor and an inspirational individual who affected all of our lives professionally and personally. His portrayal of T'Challa the Black Panther is iconic and transcends any iteration of the character in any other medium from Marvel's past. And it's for that reason that we will not recast the character. However, to honor the legacy that Chad helped us build through his portrayal of the King of Wakanda, we want to continue to explore the world of Wakanda and all of the rich and varied characters introduced in the first film. Writer-director Ryan Coogler is hard at work on the sequel now and will bring the film to you in theaters July 8th, 2022. We've got a lot in store at Marvel Studios and Disney Plus is key to the interconnection and expansion of the MCU. It will be home for both our feature films and our series for years and years to come. Since Marvel first joined Disney back in 2009, Bob Iger has been the biggest champion of the work that we do. None of this would have been possible without his support. So it is now my pleasure to turn things back over to Bob. Welcome back, everyone. This is going to be my new Marvel Black Panther 2 movie video. Obviously, Kevin Feige has been talking a lot about what's going on with the new version of Black Panther 2 that Ryan Coogler is working on right now. So I'll explain what he said and what it means about the future of that franchise, what he's talked about the characters, what it's going to explore, how the story has changed, and how that's tied up in the future of the MCU with the other movies like Fantastic Four and Avengers 5. So if you're new to the channel, we're doing a giveaway for Disney Plus memberships because of WandaVision starting. All you have to do to enter is just be a subscriber and let me know what you want them to do with the future Black Panther movies. Because of course there will be more sequels. Probably the biggest thing that he talks about there, the biggest revelation, is that they will not recast Chadwick Boseman as T'Challa. So there obviously will be more Black Panthers. He doesn't say that they won't have more Black Panthers. He's saying that they won't have more T'Challas. They won't bring in another actor. And in a separate video recently when he was doing WandaVision interviews, he also addressed that they wouldn't have a CG version of Chadwick Boseman. They're not going to do any kind of Star Wars Rise of Skywalker or Carrie Fisher situation where they try to rework a digital version of them into scenes with other actors. Chadwick Boseman will continue to be an important part of the story of Black Panther 2, very critical to what's actually happening with the plot, but just not in the way that you expected before. Then Kevin Feige's other big revelation is that the story will focus more on the world of Wakanda itself. So in the way the first Black Panther movie in Avengers Infinity War sort of gave us the Cliff's Notes version of Wakanda, we learned a little bit about it. There's so many different groups, different religions, different fighting forces all vying for control within Wakanda. We just saw like a brief taste of that when T'Challa was taking the throne during the first Black Panther movie. Like, are there any challengers? Then Umbaku steps up. If you haven't read any of the Black Panther comics, or you've only read some of them, or it's been a long time, there was actually a more recent run, I think it was Volume 6 of Black Panther, that Tahana Kasi Coates did that was a more complex look at the structure and the inner workings of Wakandan society. So it's actually probably a good place to go to, just to get the deep dive into Wakanda. You may have also seen the recent rumors that Doctor Doom might be the main villain for Black Panther 2, because there is a long, rich history between Doctor Doom and the world of Wakanda and Black Panther character in the comics, as well as a really deep connection to the Fantastic Four with the Black Panther character. In fact, if you're not a big comic book reader in general, the Black Panther character debuted for the first time in the comics in Fantastic Four number 52. And during that big Disney Plus presentation that Kevin Feige did for all the different shows and the upcoming movies, Right after he dropped this teaser for what's going on during Black Panther 2, he did the big revelation about their new version of the Fantastic Four movie. So he's mentioning new MCU Fantastic Four and Black Panther 2 in the same breath, meaning that those movies will probably share some sort of connection, at least on a surface level, even if the new Fantastic Four movie doesn't come out till a couple movies after Black Panther 2. Because Black Panther 2 is firmly summer 2022, and we're probably not going to see Fantastic Four until 2023, maybe like a year later. The big connection between Doctor Doom and Black Panther character is that, just like a lot of other big Marvel villains, he wanted their vibranium. There was this big arc in the comics called Doom War, where he basically takes his army of Doombots and invades Wakanda, eventually takes it over, and also tries to hijack Black Panther's connection to Boss, the Panther Goddess, where a lot of their more cosmic abilities come from. He tries to steal the powers of Black Panther's god. It is the most Doctor Doom thing that you could possibly do. That's one of the beauties of the Doctor Doom character is that he's both a man of science and a man of magic. So you could actually put him in a movie like Doctor Strange, like Doctor Strange versus Doctor Doom, and it would be really awesome. They also have a long history of teaming up in the comics. Or you could even put him up against one of the more science-based Avengers like Iron Man. Obviously, Iron Man in the present day of the MCU no longer around, but the Fantastic Four, obviously very technologically inclined group. 
The other big reason why that Doom War, Doctor Doom storyline is a big deal is because that's also the Black Panther arc where Shuri became a version of the Black Panther taking the mantle from T'Challa briefly. The whole connection between Black Panther and the Fantastic Four is that way back in Fantastic Four number 52, they get an invitation from Black Panther to come to Wakanda and just see this mystery land that nobody has ever been to before. When they arrive, they wind up fighting Black Panther because obviously this is comics, so if you show up with a brand new character, of course they're going to fight before they become friends. They eventually chill out and T'Challa reveals that he was just testing them and asked them here to help him deal with Ulysses Claw, who's come to try and steal their vibranium. So obviously we've already done Ulysses Claw in the Black Panther and the other Marvel movies, but the whole concept of vibranium is still a really important thing in the background, one of the most precious resources on planet Earth. Just because we made it through the whole Killmonger adventure with him trying to send vibranium weapons all over the Earth to arm militias to just sort of take over the planet, and we made it through Avengers Endgame, doesn't mean that everybody in the MCU is going to stop wanting vibranium. Also, with the death of Black Panther, you also have a question of who's going to take the throne. Most people would think that Shuri is going to become the next Black Panther because technically she's his successor. She's the next in line for the throne. But anybody in Wakanda can challenge for the throne. So Umbaku could challenge for the throne if he wants. And there's no way that Shuri is going to defeat him without her technology. And if you've seen their fights, they depower themselves. You can't use any special vibranium weapons. It basically has to be a knockdown, drag out fight, old school style. There's no way that Shuri could beat M'Baku in a fight like that. There was some news about casting one of the other minor villains. He could wind up being White Tiger or one of the other big Black Panther villains. There are a number of different religious cults that all worship different gods inside Wakanda. The Panther cult is just the main one that Black Panther worships. That's their connection to Boss, the Panther God. Doctor Strange is probably one of the most important characters during Marvel Phase 4 because of all this multiverse and Doctor Strange 2, Multiverse of Madness, is kind of the culmination of all that. You have characters like Doctor Voodoo, but there's also people within Wakanda that practice different kinds of magic that are a little bit different from the magic that Doctor Strange practices. Like they're more like shamans, but it's the same idea, different kinds of magic inside the MCU. And if Doctor Doom is going to wind up being one of the villains, that would be amazing if he was. They could also start to set up the idea of the Cabal in the background. Even though they're more like the evil version of the Illuminati and we haven't got to the Illuminati in the MCU yet. But now that we have the X-Men and the Fantastic Four characters, they can actually do that eventually. Strangely enough, nobody asked Kevin Feige any questions about Illuminati, but they did ask him about Avengers 5, and he's like, oh yeah, that's a pretty cool name, Avengers, maybe we'll use it again for some movies. Like, hell yeah, we're gonna do more Avengers movies. Avengers movies for Disney are kind of like licenses to print money, so there's no way they're ever gonna stop making Avengers movies. The whole idea, though, with the Black Panther franchise is that before Chadwick Boseman passed away, he was going to become one of the linchpins of the MCU going forward into Marvel Phase 4, Phase 5, through all the X-Men, the Fantastic Four stuff, all the bigger Avengers Secret War stuff down the line. He was probably one of their most important characters next to Spider-Man. They'll be filming the Black Panther 2 movie before too long, so we'll hear more news about castings and who the villains are going to be and how they're going to invoke all these X-Men characters because around the time that Black Panther drops, around the time of the Fantastic Four movie, that's when we're going to see the transition from Marvel Phase 4 to Marvel Phase 5. And Marvel Phase 5 is really where you'll see the rebooted version of the X-Men start running around a lot. But I am expecting them to introduce a lot of Fantastic Four stuff, Easter eggs, and X-Men Easter eggs mutants before that, especially starting in the WandaVision series. My full WandaVision episode videos are going to start posting on Friday. It'll be a weekly show, so make sure you have alerts enabled for my channel so you don't miss any of those. Everyone let me know in the comments though, what do you just want them to do with the Black Panther character and their franchise going forward if we have all this big Fantastic Four and X-Men stuff spinning up into Secret Wars eventually? While you wait for everything, everyone click here for that brand new WandaVision episode 1 scene and click here for that brand new Marvel Fantastic Four teaser video. Thank you so much for watching, everyone stay safe, and I'll see you in the next video.